What's up guys, it's Punchy, and it's time for a special event like no other. If you've been living in the depths, or if you just haven't heard, the Deep Oaken team has released an official plushie, which I'll be testing to the absolute limit. Of course, before we start, I want to thank everyone who helped me get this far. Through the highs and the lows, we've made it to 80k subs. Reaching 80,000 subscribers is honestly amazing, and I want to keep pushing out content that you guys want to see. Thanks again for your undying motivation so like and subscribe if you want to help me out. Enjoy! In the community that we're all a part of, if you asked anyone, absolutely anyone, what Deep Oaken's most iconic monster was, you'd probably get the same response. You might be asking, well, which one is it? Without a doubt in my mind, I'd say the Megalodont or the Sharko. For starters, we're thrown into the world of Deep Oaken, a permadeath game with little to no hand-holding where we first meet this monster. In everyone's first experience, Experience, the Sharko is a formidable enemy that's extremely difficult to fight and almost impossible to escape from as a new player. Its insanely goofy but menacing appearance is a funny take on the Bloodborne Shark Giant and it's become a representative of the Deep Oaken community. If you know Deep Oaken, you probably should know what the Sharko is. Upon this, the Megalodon's design was further simplified with the introduction of the most famous Sharko, Destroy Man 3. Alongside an April 1st update, Destroy Man 3 was born as our very own Deep Oaken helper. Obtained through the Sharko Fever or through the Sharko Rumbling statue, Destroy Man 3 is the little voice in your head telling you to tear down everything. The player base once again loved this, promoting Destroy Man 3 to legendary Yonko status as it now has become a part of the entire Deep Oaken experience. Surprisingly, the Deep Oaken developers listened to this and extended an irrefutable offer to the entire community. Behold, the Sharko Plush. Out of absolutely nowhere, the Sharko Plush started being funded back in 2023, selling 5,818 toys with an outstanding fund goal of 2,909%, which is honestly insane. In fact, just recently, another poll was made proposing a Dukaricia Fumo Plush, which will definitely be interesting to say the least. Anyway, people wanted this toy and it was delivered, and now it's time to test it out. Happy birthday to the Sharko plush, ascending from the depths into our real lives. Based on the monster in game, it's really hard to understand what a Sharko would really look like in person, but it about fits in the palm of my hand. With a spherical round design, it's the perfect shape for tossing around and placing wherever, and it is fairly small. In comparison, the Sharko plush is easily outscaled by your average watermelon, which I really wasn't expecting. Unlike in Deep Woken, the Sharko plush is not going to tower over you, this time the tables have turned. With a further inspection, this Sharko plush is actually pretty firm and squishable. It's not extremely hard or very soft, but it's a little bit in between. I don't know what you consider this, but it is pretty durable. In fact, this thing has foiled the hydraulic press test with an outstanding resistance of about 200 pounds. Anyway, the insane attention to detail of the Sharko plush was a pleasant and welcome surprise. The Sharko's rotund design is absolutely perfect with its goofy looking legs and unique coral back bling which looks very similar to what we see in game. Additionally, there's also a bit of depth, no pun intended, with the Sharko plush and its smile which pops out from its actual body. It's kind of impossible to see the Sharko's silly smirk on the online website, but yeah, this makes it so much better and super cool. Moving on, this toy comes with a very special Deep Oaken tag that lets us know that yes, 5,818 Sharkos are live in the plane of existence that we're in, so yeah, watch out. But for what I'm doing, we won't exactly be needing these. You can realistically do whatever you want with the Sharko plush, play some Deep Woken, help out at the gym, or test it to the absolute limit. Today, I'll be experimenting and testing out myself to see if the Sharko plush is a worthy enough opponent for the strongest himself. Don't worry, no Sharkos were actually hurt in this video. The Sharko's round appearance is very similar to a ball, and yes, it can function correctly as one as well. Dropping the Sharko from a short distance isn't gonna damage the toy. In fact, the Sharko often bounces right back, ready to fight again. With outstanding flying colors, the Sharko plush passes the balance and roll test, able to move around freely with just a little push. Back to the ball idea, yes, the Sharko easily passes the projectile test, able to knock down anything with a 
simple toss. The round, spherical design works very well for this toy since it's easy to slam around with very little effort. As a baseball, the Sharko works well, and if you want to shoot hoop, it can also function as a stand-in basketball, so 10 out of 10 points for this test. Another important reason to have a Sharko around is due to his ability in lots of different environments. The Sharko in-game comes from the depths, deep underwater, but how does he perform in the air resistance field from the Eternal Gale? After a few different runs, I'm sorry to say it, but the Sharko plush isn't going to do much against the wind itself. I'll have to mark off some points for this, but there is some visible resistance, so I guess he'll get some back for participation. Testing further, on land, the Sharko also doesn't run very fast, and I mean, yeah, his legs are very small. In fact, I'm glad it doesn't, because running away in the game is already hard enough, so the Sharko is allowed to take a break, right? Even after being thrown into the real punchy boxing ring, the Sharko plush is able to tank and live through countless punches without faltering, and that's kind of crazy. I mean, the website did say that we could punt the Sharko around, and they weren't lying. So, I'ma rate this Maharaga adaptation out of 10, which is really great. He's adapting to everything. But, it seemed to me like the Sharko plush functioned best in the watery depths. Fitting into any container, a box, a jar, or anything with water, we gotta try out the classic plushy test. After soaking in water, we'll hit up the microwave, which surprisingly worked well enough. The next was slamming it into the wall, which resulted in a bounce, I guess, instead of a splat. The Sharko plush was just that tanky. Although, its outstanding ability to defend was quite impressive actually, it's about time we get to cooking. With a simple frying pan and essential cooking techniques, boom, we have ourselves a McGurger to enjoy at the end of the day. I'm not gonna lie, it isn't exactly the same or as strange as the one in game, but I had to do it. So, finally, I rate the Deboken Sharko plush a 3 out of 3 for Destroy Man 3, but of course, you should probably test this out for yourself. Of course, if you guys like this, I'll do more things like this in the future of my channel, but again, I just want to say thanks so much for helping me reach 80k subs. Share your thoughts down below on what you think about the Sharko plushie and what's gonna happen next with the new Ducaricia plushie. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and please have a good one. It's punching time.